you've been following our journey, you know that Williams Warren is working towards a brewing appliance, but we think they're onto something much, much bigger. They are revolutionizing craft brewing. They're making the process so easy anyone can do it, regardless of their focus around an appliance. And that's why we're here in New Zealand. We might get a heck of a lot of more fresh beer coming our way. This is living the dream where you have an appliance in your house and you can pour yourself a cold one. That's right, yourself. yeah. So what's in here? Two brew keg tins and I brewed a cider in this uh, left hand one and a bohemian pilsner with a little bit of extra hops on this side. You're today going to take us through the whole step bit by bit by bit yep. through the equipment yep. showing us what we need to do to get our first brew going yep. and then ultimately we're going to have a cold one. Exactly. It's so hot in here. Yeah. How long are we going to wait for the beer? Uh, six days. Yeah. Six days? Yeah. Right, so you have to have a few of these going at the same time. That's right, yeah, why not? Let's get to the brew cake itself. It's got a conical a cone at the bottom, so it serves as a fermenter. But once it's pressurized with the lid, and we clarify it, and then it becomes a keg. So that's why we call it a brew keg. We are going to clean it, we're going to sanitize it, yep. and this is going to be the thing you get from Williams Warren that's going to get you there. You're giving things a rinse with water and a bit of a scrub, you're then cleaning it with detergent and heat, and then you're rinsing that. that that's basically all you're doing. The chlorine in the water and the fluoride, does that have any bearing on your sanitizing and on your beer tastes? What I learned from people in the industry is it really doesn't matter. And so everything I used to do, I was boiling the water to get rid of the chlorine. But then, because I was doing so many trials with people coming in and doing proper blind taste testing, it actually makes no difference at all. So, so no, no difference on the taste, but does it do anything to the fermentation? Nothing. 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 Okay, so yep. myth debunked there. Myth debunked. Before we go any further, I need to ask you about the smarts that goes into the Williams Warren ingredients. Mm -hmm. Because it almost sounds too good to be true that you buy a can, chuck it in a vessel and you got yourself some beer. It looks like, if I talk to some of my hipster friends, that they don't think this is real brewing. All beer is made from four ingredients. Malted barley, hops, yeast and water, right? So the only difference between malted extract and all grain breweries or home brewers is one evaporation step. And they've already had four themselves, we just have a fifth. But we know brewing can handle the evaporation steps because they've got four of them themselves. Does it change the taste? These are as good as commercial breweries. We know that because we've beaten them in beer competition. So the point is you've outsourced some of the risky steps to somebody that does it pretty well anyway, which is mostly setting just a really solid foundation for your beer. This is from a brewery in New Zealand. They do that fifth evaporation stage, if you like, and make it into liquid malt extract so that we can then just add water later on. So what I found when I combined the New Zealand barley and uh, with the North American barley, liquid and dry, with these great dry yeasts that we get either from Canada or from France in our systems, it's commercial quality beer made in six or seven days. For my first brew at home, how do I know that I have the right bits and pieces coming together? These come in a, in a kit. You probably start your first brew with the basic ingredients, okay. but the beauty of the system is you can hop it up. The bitterness of the hops balances the sweetness of the malt, and that's what people talk about balance in beer. The first technique is soaking in hot water, that's just getting the oils. The second technique, if we boil the hops now in a pot, we're going to increase the bitterness. And then the third way is dry hopping, and that's adding the raw hops straight to our sediment bottle. There's one more ingredient in beer. Yep, we need to rehydrate the yeast in uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Those little water. animals. Yeah, exactly. get, get them going. This is S04, which is an ale yeast. It just kicks in so quick and settles so well. It's a great yeast to use. So chuck it in. Yep. All right. So then I know that all the yeast has gone on. Okay. So we've got all ingredients, everything is ready yep. to go here. What's next? Right, so now we're going to put the lid on. Just gently slide that in. There we go. Done. This whole brewing and fermenting under pressure. Yeah. Is that something common in beer? Any 10 meter tank in the world, the yeast is at one bar pressure at the bottom because that is the definition of one bar. Right. People have not brewed under pressure. We sort of kicked that off really right at the beginning of fermentation. Halfway through fermentation, Germans have historically sometimes put the lid on to allow the pressure to build up. 
In England, you might get like 80% through a brew. They'll transfer it to what they call conditioning tanks, which means adding of the CO2. The yeast is making 10 times the bubbles you need, so you just need, we're just keeping 10% of it, but home brewers let it all go. Then they have to go through a carbonation step, and that has historically taken time. So people that did it in bottles wait a month. Why are some beers gassy? So one bar is about just over six grams per litre CO2, which is on the high level. Most lagers, would be about five grams, but Williams Warren Brewers seem to have liked it a bit more bubbly, so we've just sort of set our instructions to be on the high so side. So I can control it, and therefore the carbonation that I get in my beer is actually natural carbonation. It's not all dependent on what's in that tank. Yeah, and then we just maintain the pressure as when we hook this up at the dispense stage. This is now at its fermentation stage. Where do I put it in my house? How do I make sure that I don't run it too cold? You can keep it in a room with a little, if you want, temperature controller heater on it. You keep it between 18 degrees Celsius and 28. But a better option is to use a fridge, for example, or a kegerator, and that's great because you're then controlling to a box. So we can plug in a heat belt and the fridge and the temperature controller and control this temperature to whatever degree you want. How do I know it's done? In 12 hours time there's going to be so much activity in here, thousands of bubbles rising at the top of this bottle. You'll see foam through here, mm -hmm. the pressure will be up to one and a half bar, oh we didn't set it. Mm, that's why I'm asking. One, two, three, four, five. Five half turns, two and a half full turns. We're going to end at 1.1 so we're brewing slightly on excess than what we're going to end up on. The beer is fermented. The yeast all settles down to the bottom of the sediment bottle, but it's still cloudy. They've still got uh, protein haze, which is the gluten in beer actually, and they've got yeast all sitting up here. So we want to force a clarification agent in there without taking the lid off so we don't lose our bubbles. Now, there's a bunch of people out there at the moment that says, you know what, beer is better if it's not clarified because it still has all the wholesomeness. There's cloudy beer, wheat beer. Uh, which is fine, but most uh, lagers are cleared and ales are cleared now. Now if you want to drink a slightly cloudy beer, you could drink this now. If you want it clearer, another couple of days we'll make it clear for you. The actual substance you're using to clarify, this is safe? Yeah, so it's used by breweries. It goes in and it reacts and then it just falls out. So this together now needs to go back in our key grater and fridge and wait another day. Here we go. Easy as that. What's a few more minutes or a few more seconds? I want to pour my own beer. The whole point of a Williams Warren is you can have your own beer. And it's fresh and you've made it your way. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, you're it's welcome. It's definitely going to be a life-changing yeah. event going forward. Good. Gl glad to have been of service. Cheers, guys.